you're back with Steph and Dennis, and today we're talking about what you need to know before tax season. If you didn't already know, the Canadian tax due date is April 30th, 2021 for most Canadians, and for self-employed people, it's June 15th. So we thought it was the perfect time to start talking about what you need to know before and about filing your taxes, what's new in 2021 when it comes to taxes, what we do, and just everything, all things related to taxes. We're also really excited to be working with TELUS Online Security, powered by Norton LifeLock on this video, and later on, we're gonna take some time to chat about the importance of cyber safety and privacy, especially when you're doing your taxes online during this time of year. If you're excited for this video and more content, just like it, show us some love down below, hit the subscribe button, and let's get into it. Okay, so let's kick this off by talking a little bit about why we pay taxes first. And for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna talk about it from the perspective of being a full-time employee, but there's obviously some differences, of course, when it comes to being self-employed. Now, you've probably noticed the salary listed on your employment contract is not actually what you get to take home on each paycheck, right? So we always talk on our videos about your actual salary versus your take-home pay, and that's what you should be focusing on. So the percentage varies depending on what your income is, but if we look at me for an example, my typical tax rate is around 28%, so a 28% difference in my salaried amount and what I actually take home on my paychecks. And that 28% is then going towards taxes, which is again, taken away from my employer on the onset and getting paid into a variety of taxes, federal tax deductions, provincial tax deductions, CPP deductions, EI deductions, you name it. Also on top of those deductions, I just named that I would pay in taxes. 4% of that 28% is actually taxes that my employer would pay to be able to pay me. <laughs> So basically the overall picture there is that 28% of your pay is going towards taxes, whether that's paid from your employer or from you. And again, that 28% is a pretty fair amount of money that you aren't receiving from your salaried amount. And we're gonna link below in the description box, a calculator that'll help you determine approximately how much you're being taxed as well. If you're curious and wanna know your breakdown based on your income. So now I wanna talk a little bit about why we pay all of this. Should we be mad about paying taxes? I feel like all the time we're hearing about ways to lower our taxes, to pay less back. The general, oh no, it's tax season energy that's given off this time of year. At a very high level, we pay taxes because the government needs taxes in order to actually operate. It's their largest source of income and hopefully the taxes that you pay are going towards government programs that you support. Again, that could range from public spaces, parks and libraries, things like that, healthcare programs, depending on where you live, military spending, all, all those different things that the government pays for gets funded through and at least the largest source of income for those programs is our taxes. Okay, so to jump back into it, if you're already paying taxes throughout the year, why is it that we're actually filing a tax return? Does that mean that we need to pay more money? The answer is maybe, but overall the biggest reason that we're actually filing taxes is so that the CRA, if you're in Canada, or the IRS, for example, if you're in the United States, knows how much money you made the prior year, and they'll let you know if you do owe additional money or if they owe money back to you as well. Overall, you're essentially sending in paperwork that states how much money you made from any and all income sources throughout the year. All right, so let's talk about actually filing your taxes. So first things first, you gotta gather all of your information, which you're starting to do by watching this video. Make sure you gather information on what you actually need to do. Get your files together, get your tax slips together, get your T4 together if you're getting a T4. Figure out if there's any deductions or any credits that you can claim. Sometimes, and depending on the year, they might have some new ones coming in that you can also claim as well. Okay, so let's actually pause there for a second because when you hear the term tax credit, Basically what that means is they're essentially deductions, expenses, credits that help bring down the amount of tax you have to pay as stated by the government. In other words, they're legal and simple ways to limit the amount of taxes you have to pay. So to give you guys some examples, there's tax credits for your education, there's the disability tax credit, there's one for your medical expenses, there's ones for your savings plan, so one related to the RRSP, and there's also new ones like the home office tax credit, which we'll talk about in a second. So we'll have a list of all the deductions all the credits, all the expenses from the Government of Canada's website linked in the description box below if you wanna check that out. But next up is actually doing and filing your taxes. So you can technically do this by phone or mail, but according to the CRA, as of 2020, 92.1% of returns were filed online. So we'll talk about that as well in a second, but if you do wanna file online, you can do that using a CRA approved tax software. So this includes TurboTax, it includes Wealthsimple Tax, Taxtron, and CloudTax, just to name a few. Basically, this software will take you through everything you need to provide, so starting off with your personal information. So this includes your SIN, your date of birth, your name, et cetera, et cetera, your different income sources. So if you are someone who's employed by a company, then you'll find this on your T4, the different deductions you wanna claim. So whether you're in school and you're claiming those education tax credits, 
or if you're someone who's been contributing to your RSP and you wanna take advantage of that RSP tax credit as well. Basically, you gotta follow the process and then at the end of it, you actually submit your information off. So something to keep in mind and remember is that if you do owe money on your taxes and you don't file by the deadline, you'll have to pay a 5% late filing penalty and then you'll have to pay 1% every month after that. Something else to keep in mind is that the CRA will actually charge you daily compound interest on any unpaid balances. So make sure you mark your calendars. You've got less than a month to get them finished and submitted. So now you know how to pay your taxes and if you're like the majority of Canadians, you'll likely be filing your taxes online. Depending on who you are, you might think that cybersecurity threats like phishing, online scams, and identity theft are unrealistic, especially now in the age of TikTok, online banking, auto pay, Basically, we do everything online, so what could the harm be in filing your taxes online again? Aren't the odds of something actually happening to you pretty low? A stat that we found that really surprised us is that according to Statistics Canada, 42% of Canadians have actually come across at least one cybersecurity incident, like phishing attacks, malware, fraud, and identity theft since the start of the pandemic, so in the last year. Canadians have collectively lost more than $60 million to fraud in 2020 alone, mostly with scams related to COVID-19. And although nearly all Canadians agree that online security threats like device hacking, privacy breaching, and identity theft are an issue, only 18% of Canadians actually do something to protect themselves. People aged 18 to 34 are the most likely to use the same password over and over and over again, but are the least likely to actually use an antivirus software to counteract that behavior. So overall, basically people, we are too comfortable out here. And we're talking about this now because according to Cyber Center Canada, tax season has historically been the time of year where cybercrime is at its highest. And with more people looking to file their taxes online this year than ever, and taking into consideration that there's also a rise in cybercrime since the beginning of the pandemic, it's a really good time to actually think about what you can do to protect yourself in advance. I remember very vividly the first year Den was filing his taxes online, and it was the same year that a lot of people were getting those spam, scammy calls telling you that the CRA wanted you to send thousands of dollars to them immediately regarding to your taxes. And again, it sounds silly in hindsight, and luckily he didn't fall victim to that, but I do remember and picture me getting that call from him frantically freaking out about what this could mean. So on that note, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, today we're partnering with TELUS Online Security, Canada's most comprehensive all-in-one protection. It features cyber safety and privacy solutions from Norton 360 and LifeLock and can be used by all Canadians, not just TELUS customers. And also has full service identity restoration backed by a team of experts. TELUS Online Security is simple and intuitive to use and they have packages ranging from only 10 to $30 per month. And you can also learn more at telus.com slash online security that we'll also have linked below in the description box for you. So be proactive and help protect your personal and financial information before you go ahead and file your taxes online. And again, this is the software that Dan and I will both be using as well. So if you have any questions about how it works or anything like that, let us know in the comments below and we'll answer those for you. Okay, so before we let you go, we do want to touch on what's actually new this year in terms of taxes due to COVID or in general, just the pandemic. So first off, a new deduction that's available is the simplified home office expenses deduction. During the initial lockdown, there were 5 million Canadian employees working from home. And by this past October, there were still 2.4 million Canadians still working from home. So as I'm sure you can imagine, this deduction is available if you had to perform more than 50% of your usual hours from home for more than four consecutive weeks in 2020. So if that sounds like you, I know that was definitely me over the last year. I mean, I'm still working from home. What you can do is you can actually deduct $3 for every day you've had to work from home due to the pandemic up to a max of $400 from your taxable income. Another new one this year is the Canada training credit. So this one's for anyone who paid for tuition or training in 2020. So at the end of 2019, any eligible workers aged 25 to 65 started accumulating an annual sum of $250 up to a lifetime maximum of $5,000 in a Canada training credit account. Starting this year, you can claim the full balance in that account or up to half of your tuition or your training fees, whichever one is less. So for anyone who doesn't know whether they're actually eligible for this credit or they don't know the amount that they have within their account, what you can do is you can check your notice of assessment that you got from the CRA when you filed your 2019 return or you can actually hop on the My Account, so the online website for CRA, and you should be good to go. You'll find it on there as well. Something else that I wanna mention is that for any payments that you received as part of CERB, CESB, CRB, CRSB, or CRCB, and once again, that was definitely a mouthful, they are all considered taxable income and have to be reported on your return. Basically, you should have gotten a T4A from CRA or Service Canada telling you the amount of money that you received. But once again, you can always log into your 
from my account on CRA's website and check there as well. Something else that's super important, and I'll throw it up on the screen for a couple of these, is that no taxes were deducted when they initially gave it to you, or in other words, no taxes were deducted at source. What that means is that you'll actually owe income taxes on the full amount that you receive. Once again, for a couple of these, and I'll throw it up on the screen again, 10% is what was deducted at source, so initially, but you might have to pay more than that, so keep that in mind. Okay guys, so that's a wrap on this video. Once again, we hope that you found it informative. We hope that you found it helpful and you're ready to do your taxes now. Also a big thank you and a big shout out to TELUS Online Security powered by Norton LifeLock for sponsoring this video. And once again, we've got a link down in the description box below if you wanna find out more and ensure that you're staying safe online during this tax season. With that, if you haven't checked out some of our other money videos, make sure you do check them out next door and we'll be back, you know the deal, let's go.